did there. <laughs> you asked me to be boss of, honor, boss of honor first, and then you told me about the speech. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm David Gator. Um, I work for a company called BioWare. You, you're probably all familiar with it. Uh, I've been there for 15 years now. And uh, the first game I worked on was Baldur's Gate 2 way back in the day. Uh, first game I was lead writer on was uh, an expansion pack for Nero Tonight's called Hordes of, Hordes of the Underdark. Um, and then I moved on to Dragon Age Origins and I've been with Dragon Age ever since. Uh, and the, the thing that is probably most remarkable during those 15 years is how much the industry has changed. Uh, I'm, I'm a gay developer, so it's weird these days to sort of add that adjective on because uh, I was th had thought of myself as a developer first, and when I first started in the industry, it really felt like uh, inclusivity wasn't something that anybody thought about or gave any consideration to. I think it's, uh, some people assume uh, wrongly that it was my presence that, uh, that made Bioware start including bisexual and gay romances. Um, and it really wasn't. I mean, uh, when I started, it, <sighs> just assumed that wasn't something that you could be done. I didn't, I didn't bring it up. And, and I, I feel bad about that now. I thought, maybe I should have, but that just wasn't the mindset back then. And it wasn't even a game that I was working on that did it first. Uh, Jade Empire was the first game that we did. Uh, yeah. It was a completely different team that, that did it, and, and uh, you should see my face when it sort of bubbled up from the, their floor. I got told that uh, their, their, two of their romances were, were going to have same-sex options. I was like, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? And, and it, in a way, I felt bad because I just always assumed that uh, all the, the the guys that I worked with would never consider that. So why should I bring it up? And and it was if I felt bad because I underestimated them. You know, that they were willing to, to jump in and and, and uh, it, it sort of opened up a, a whole new world. And now, I mean, uh, we're working. I'm working on a game called uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. It's the the latest uh, game in that series. Yeah, uh, and we announced uh, recently the, some of our romance options that included uh, uh, Sarah and Dorian, who are two characters who are gay. And uh, I know I, I was interviewed uh, for the community uh, to talk about one of, the, one of those two that I did, Dorian, uh, a gay man. And uh, I, I listed at length like the things about him. He, he's uh, from the Deventer Imperium. He's sort of a rebel trying to change his homeland. Uh, he's kind of cocky, he's a, he's a very talented mage. And I was asked, so uh, how is this character different from other characters that you've, that you've written before? And I said, well, he's the first one who's, who's actually gay. You know, like, that, uh, that I've never had the chance to, to write a character from that experience before. I mean, uh, we've had a lot of bisexual characters, and there's, there's I'm, there's nothing wrong with writing a bisexual character, but there are different stories you can write if you, you have very specific identities. And this, this was a chance for me to, to write about this, something that meant a lot to me. Uh, and it was, it was kind of not unexpected, I guess, uh, but a little disappointing nevertheless, some of the reaction we got as a result of that, the, the, the amount of uh, tweets that I received. Why would you write a character defined by being gay? Uh, did you did you miss the rest of the interview? <laughs> All those those qualities with this character? No, you just stopped listening as soon as gay. Well, I think part of that was the the, the actually the media picked up on it, and so they were the, the headlines: Bioware's first gay character. Okay, <laughs> not our first gay character. We've had them before. Mass Effect Three had two. Uh, no, Knights of the Old Republic had two. Juhani, he was our very first. So not it was it was my first, not. Our first, and I was very proud to be able to have the opportunity to do that, and and uh, proud as well to work for a company that's willing to do it because it's not it's not just you know I walk into the room and say we're going gay and everybody just falls in line. <laughs> for any company to make an effort in inclusivity, it it requires a chain of people, and at any point in that chain, right up to Electronic Arts. You could have one person that could go, no, I don't feel comfortable with this. And it would not happen. 
So this requires a, a group effort. You know, like uh, say what you want of electronic arts, and I know a lot of people do. But this is this is a this is a publisher that is is making uh, a deliberate effort at being more inclusive, and I think they deserve props for that because they're 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 the ones giving us the thumbs up. They're, it's it's all their money. So they're putting money on the line, and there are good reasons for that, and I think that's what a lot of people miss. The, among the, the many, uh, uh, well, many trollish, but uh, many sort of misguided responses to, to Dorian's inclusion, um, so there's this misunderstanding as to the amount of effort required to be inclusive. And, and I, I read these tweets, and I really don't understand what they're thinking when the writers say are sitting down and we're making characters, sort of coming up with concepts, it's like, do they go, wait, 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 everyone, we need a gay guy. <laughs> so we write on the board next to like, you know, rebel elf, uh, 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 chantry supporting mage, gay guy. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. We'll figure out the rest later. <laughs> it just means that at some point, a developer stops. And we ask ourselves a few questions. Do we have options for all our players? And it doesn't, it doesn't just stop at, at sexuality. Uh, being inclusive means uh, embracing uh, women, means embracing people of color. There's a whole spectrum, and, and, it's, and it's weird that the, 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 the amount of effort they think that that requires, that, that the moment we ask ourselves those questions, that we can't ask ourselves any other questions, it's like, stop everything, everyone. The entire company has to shut down until we solve this problem. <laughs> it doesn't happen. It's like, um, uh, just the, actually it wasn't that long ago, um, our artists, our character artists, are going to pass through the game. And we, we talked about this previously, about uh, uh, having more people of color represented in the world, because we have different ethnicities in our setting. So we, we shouldn't just see them in the major characters, we should see them just out in the world. And, and, uh, so we sat down with them, and, and then they asked questions like, you know, are elves and dwarves? Is there any reason why elves and dwarves can't also be people of color? Is that, is that, they were very curious. Is that part of the, the lore? And it's like, well, no, no. The lore can be what we, what we want it to be. If we were to say that elves and dwarves could say only be white, uh, that has to come from somewhere. It requires a deliberate decision at some point to change that. And because the, the, I think the, the problem is, is that among developers, there's just a, a large concern for what the default is. And it's not that, that, they're, that they, they go with the default to be destructive or, or to be malicious. It's just that nobody questions that. Nobody stops and says, well, maybe that shouldn't be the case. And then there's the, the, the question as well over, over, well, why would you do this? You know, maybe, maybe you're saying it's not that much effort, but why would you spend any effort at all? These are really small groups. They're not that small. We take female gamers, for instance. We have, we have lots of figures that come out uh, that, are, that are taken across a, a large base that say, mm, women make up at least 40% of the, the player base or larger. And they say, wow, that includes casual games and MMOs, not these games. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Freak 47 on, on Twitter. <laughs> Perhaps the more pertinent question at that point would be, why don't they play our games? Well, you have combat. <laughs> have you played an MMO? <laughs> Girls don't like combat. Have you met a woman? <laughs> Part of the, the reason for inclusivity is, is inviting people to play your games. And yeah, some of, a lot of them do already play your games. Well, then why would you focus on them? <laughs> why do we focus on you? You already <laughs> played our game too. <laughs> the idea is to, to invite them to the table. That if they're, they're, they're gamers out there that maybe play games that they feel comfortable with, we ask the question was, why don't they feel comfortable playing our game? Because from an economic standpoint, if you want to put everything else aside, and not that you should, but if you want to put everything else aside and, and, and look purely at the business standpoint, 
Triple A games are incredibly expensive. The cost of making one has been, if you look at the, the graphs, it goes up exponentially. Price remains the same. So every AAA company out there is scrambling for ways to get more people at the table. Now, we could keep going with the traditional audience that, that is there, and, and we all fight over that same audience. Or, at some point, developers are going to look at what about the other audience? People who are already playing games of some kind, and maybe not playing our games. What can we do to make them get the perception that they're welcome to play our game, and that maybe they should try it out? That, that's part of what making a game is all about. It's part of what being successful at making a game. And one day, some developer is going to be going to do this in an obvious fashion, and they're going to be incredibly expensive, uh, sorry, incredibly successful at it. And then every other company out there is going to jump on that bandwagon so fast. It's going to happen. Because you, you, because you can see the attitude changing. And it is. It's, like, it's not just Bioware that's making an effort at this. I was playing Last of Us. Anyone play that game? The Last of Us? Great game. Uh, and then they made an effort, at, at, obviously made an effort at some point, at including characters uh, that, that they had Bill, who, uh, gay man, and, and of course uh, Ellie herself. Oh, that's a bait and switch. They revealed that she was gay later. <laughs> Didn't need to come up earlier, did it? <laughs> what, is it? Are you saying that when a gay character presents themselves, they must jump out and say, I'm a gay character! <laughs> If you think that, that, that that gay character is suddenly an entirely different person, then that's your problem. Because they didn't transform into a different person just because you found out at some point that they were gay. And I think that it, it, it's eroding that attitude that is necessary. Like, sure, we announced Dorian and, and the news came in and they were like, they announced it far and wide and people reacted. Okay, maybe I'd like just, it'd be great to get to a point where just mentioning that a character is gay isn't newsworthy anymore. Maybe it's necessary now to get people, you know, over that, you know, oh, fan in yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> to get past that point, and then it'd be nice to get past that point because there's another reason to do it, which is for narrative purposes. Narr to have, when you're making characters, for instance, to have more things in the box that you can go to to make that character more interesting. I'm not saying that making a character a minority inherently makes them more interesting. But it, it's, it's possible, and it's possibly more interesting. That's a thing to consider, that maybe the, having more characters that aren't, you know, white guys with stubbly hair and very grisly attitudes, <laughs> that maybe that isn't the most interesting thing that you can do. If you're a story writer, you want options. We have, we have, a, we have a character in, uh, in um, Dragon Age Inquisition named Vivienne. Uh, her first concepts, I don't know if you've seen her, she, she's a, she's the first enchanter, she's, she's very fabulous, has uh, like this, this horned helmet, she's from, she's from uh, Orlais, uh, it's kind of Grace Jones, but she didn't start off that way. Uh, she started off as a white character, and then at some point, I, I think actually came from the artist first, they said, well, you know, she's with this glittering white outfit, you know what would look really striking is if she was black. And it, from the story perspective, we go, oh, oh, Actually, you know, that adds such an interesting spin on, on how she achieved power and what she would have had to go through to achieve power as somebody who is visibly different from everyone in the nation where she resides. There, 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 there are things that change those aspects. When we were talking about Dorian, the fact that, that he was kind of a pariah from his homeland, and it came up, well, what if he's gay? Wouldn't, wouldn't that add a spin? Because uh, uh, the attitude in Tevinter, they have this sort of this, this purity mentality that mages must be must present themselves as, as normal and, and perfect in all aspects, and everything else has to be sort of kept hush hush. What if he what if he was also gay? Does that change his story at all? And it does. So having these these things in your in your narrative toolbox that that you don't have to like it, it doesn't have to be so deliberate. It's like well we put the gay guy forward, and everything that's interesting about him comes from him being gay. That's not true in real life. Shouldn't be true in the stories we tell. But it, it is possible to have characters that are more interesting by having, having different things you can make about them that are, that are also inclusive. And uh, um, I think that, that in the end, that's, that's a good reason for companies to, to make that effort, as, as small as it needs to be, to stop and ask that question. And it's not too much to ask. And I think, I think that if this becomes a more regular thing, 
then the, 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 you don't have to worry as much about there being a lot of focus on one game, on the media uh, uh, making a big deal out of it, or worry that that one game has to be sort of everything to all people. I think what's, if, if every, more games just started doing a little bit, then the attitudes at large would change. And I think that's, that's what uh, uh, game developers have to think about in the coming years because uh, the, the risk is to be, to be left behind. And I don't think any company really wants that. And I think everybody in this room can see that, that the industry is changing. And I would not want to, to place too much importance on the, the, the white dude trolls who scream at the top of their lungs because I think it would be a big disservice to straight men at large, straight white men at large, to think that all of them feel this way because I think that is definitely not true. And we would not want to, I would not want to underestimate them any more than I, it was great that I underestimated the, the white dudes, straight white dudes that I work with at Bioware. Thank you very much.